Good evening, everyone. I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Well, God says anything made secret, he brings to light. I got more proof that HVO USGS has been lying to everybody about what's going on there in Hawaii. One, Mauna Loa is deflating. We got major subsidence going on along the eastern rift zone. According to the coordinates, this is along the outside rim of the Kilauea volcano. There's Halimama. This is in millimeters. You notice we had a spike that went up and all of a sudden it dropped. Went off the page there. East, north. About 400 millimeters it has dropped. 15, almost 16 inches. The bottom chart has dropped, it says here, 600 millimeters. A little more than 23 and a half inches. The next area I'm going to show you is northeast of the volcano. That's it right there. Interesting, before all this activity started, there was a trend, a spike of rising. See that? We got east and we got north. And now the trend has gone down over 800 millimeters. That's 31 inches, almost three feet. So it's looking like this whole side of the volcano is dropping drastically. In four hours, Hawaii experienced hundreds of earthquakes. The following volcanic eruption placed residents and tourists in danger. Geologists say they cannot predict when or where an eruption will take place following the quakes. Ashley Banks tells us more tonight. Experts warn a volcano in Hawaii could erupt very soon after a crater floor collapse. More than 250 earthquakes rocked the island. Although most of these earthquakes were minor, they were felt by locals. One earthquake registered at a 4.2 magnitude, shaking the coast. Geologists say as a result of these earthquakes, lava may burst through the ground east of Kilauea, which is the most active of the five volcanoes that form Hawaii's main island. The U.S. Geological Survey's Hawaiian Volcano Observatory warned the seismic activity could lead to a lava breakout. However, what's alarming is they could not pinpoint when or where. Good morning, everyone. This is your uh, Kilauea update for the morning of June 1st. Uh, starting in the lower east rift zone, um, Fisher 8 is uh, still the most active fissure and is continuing to produce persistent fountains up to heights of 260 feet, and it's feeding a major lava flow field that is heading northeast alongside Highway 132. The flow front is moving at about 80 yards an hour and is currently 0.85 miles west of the Four Corners intersection. Um, a mandatory evacuation is in effect for Leilani Estates and residents of Kapoho Beach Lots and Vacation Lands are being urged to evacuate by 6 p.m. today or risk being isolated if the lava flow cuts access to Beach Road. Um, the Fisher 18 flow front has stagnated about half a mile from Route 137, but small breakouts are still occurring further up the flow with the most active one about 1.5 miles from the road. At the summit, um, ash continued to erupt intermittently from the vent in Hale Ma'u Ma'u Crater, and continued explosions in elevated seismicity are expected. Um, and the overlook vent itself within the crater has grown from about 12 acres to more than 100 acres uh, as a result of the explosions. So communities downwind should continue to be prepared for ash fall and bog as long as the explosions continue. And as always, the USGS Volcanoes website for the Hawaii Volcano Observatory is a good place to find information about preparing for and dealing with ash. Thanks. Mock, yeah, ing, yeah, bird, yeah, yeah. 1,500 cubic kilometers of earth and rock plummet into the sea. On impact, the land displaces a massive amount of water. The ocean rushes back to fill the giant gap. 
From this cataclysmic disturbance emerges the tsunami, heading directly for Honolulu. Estimated time to impact, 30 minutes. This is the direction that a, a big tsunami would come from, uh, from, from the big island. The wave first becomes visible as it stands and breaks on a shallow bank, 40 kilometers southeast of Honolulu. You'd see the sea rear up in front of you. It would be huge. It would rise up above you the size of a building, the size of, of a 10-story building. Surging inland at up to 70 kilometers per hour, the tsunami slams Honolulu. Because the tsunami's energy stretches down to the ocean floor, this wave is not clean water. It's filled with sand, coral, and rock. Water penetrates 16 kilometers inland before being sucked back out to sea in a lethal maelstrom of wreckage. It annihilates nearly everyone and everything in its path.